Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures, I'm Big Lee and this week I want to ask is historical wargaming elitist? So this week's talking point grew out of a conversation uh, that I had with a store assistant in a well-known high street wargaming company. I won't mention which company because I'm not having a dig at them in particular or their products or indeed their customers. The conversation just gave me food for thought uh, which developed, obviously, into this particular topic. So the conversation went something along the lines of, I would walked in and I was asked, which of their products do I play? And when I said, none of them, I actually play historicals, the shop assistant almost recoiled as if I had the plague. And quite unasked for, he immediately started telling me that he didn't like historical war games because the players were too elitist. Now, aside from his rather unique approach uh, to encouraging me to take an interest in his products and the games that he was obviously pushing. Um, I was rather taken aback by the characterisation of our hobby as elitist. So let's ask ourselves, is historical wargaming elitist? Does it attract button counters who discourage less fanatical wargamers from our particular branch of the hobby? I suppose it can happen. We all know someone like that. But on the whole, that's not my experience of the historical wargaming community at all. I've talked before about gatekeepers to the hobby. And some of the worst, but thankfully rarest, examples can only really be described as wargame snobs. People for whom only 100% accuracy and 100% dedication to their particular period is sufficient. These are the people for whom any conversation is not a meeting of minds, just an opportunity to correct others and to criticise. Now I'm sure we've all encountered them one time or another. I usually encounter them at shows, unfortunately. But thankfully, this doesn't happen often. And overwhelmingly, my experience is that this group are very few in number and becoming fewer year on year. Now the vast majority of historical gamers that I encounter online or in person are anything but elitist. Most are more than happy to share their knowledge and enthusiasm for historical gaming with anyone who needs help. I don't have any data to support this uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if historical wargaming was the easiest genre to break into as a newbie purely because uh, yeah, once you're across the threshold, the community is so welcoming. Now, there is an argument, of course, to be said when someone has spent years doing original, original research that they are under no obligation to just hand it all over to someone new to the period. But at the same time, most of the war gamers I have ever met are not obsessive academics who have decades of unique research clutched jealously in their arms. I've had lots of things shared with me over the years from otherwise complete strangers whose only gain in doing so was to encourage someone else in the hobby that they love. That to me sounds like the complete opposite of what my understanding of what constitutes an elitist. Now I think it's worth saying that I do not think that specialist knowledge of a given period or genre in and of itself makes a person elitist. It's how you share that depth of knowledge that counts. There are plenty of Warhammer 40,000 players out there with a near encyclopedic understanding of every edition, rule book, codex and special rule, just as there will be historical war gamers with a specialism in a particular period or a particular set of rules. What makes an expert elitist is how they behave with that knowledge, in my humble opinion. Are they happy to share, encourage, discovery and welcome newcomers? Or do they look down on anyone who lacks the same level of knowledge as they do? So while it is quite possible for a small cohort of historical wargamers to be elitist, the vast majority are not at all like that. And for those that are, the same could just as easily be, as be said for sci-fi or fantasy war gamers. In short, elitism has nothing whatsoever to do with the genre of the games we play and more to do with the type of person that behaves that way.
Incidentally, I was in the store just out of idle curiosity, trying to maintain my sanity while being dragged unwillingly around the shops by my, my poor wife. It's all wargaming after all, I reasoned with myself, without realising that as I crossed the store's threshold, I was representing all historical wargamers in an existential battle for the honour of their hobby. I smiled my most winning smile at the shop person and uh, said that, you know, that was not a characterization that I recognized in the historical wargaming community. I explained that most of the players that I know were friendly, open, and more than happy to share their knowledge and skills with anyone curious about historical wargames. He wasn't interested, of course. He'd made up his mind and had immediately written me off as not a potential customer. His only correct assumption of the whole encounter, it has to be said. I made a point of staying in the store, taking an interest in the figures and chatting with some of the players who were using the store's games table. When I eventually left, I wished him a good day and walked out with my dignity intact. And yes, feeling just a little bit superior for my maturity and ability to remain polite in the face of such negative stereotyping. So, as usual, I want to ask if you have any sympathy for this guy's analysis of historical wargamers? Do you think we are an elitist bunch? Or like me, do you not recognise that characterisation at all? I suspect I know the answer to the question, but I have to ask, and as always, I'd love to hear what you think on the, in the conversation below. So time for a very quick hobby update, and this week I have uh, a game to report on. Last weekend was my first war game of the year with the Rejects in Stuart's Shed of War, and for a change, it wasn't Stuart running the game. You may already have seen the short video that I put out on the channel on Friday featuring pictures from the game. But if you haven't, please check it out. Now, Richard brought his 6mm MDF figures from Commission Figurines to the shed to refight the Battle of Rivoli, which took place in 1797. This would be the fourth attempt at relieving the French siege of Mantua and as the Austrian commander I was advised that troops and other resources were almost exhausted and unlikely to be replenished. The plan therefore was to send a diversionary force further to the east uh, to catch and destroy the French forces east of Lake Garda centred around Rivoli. The game began with the enemy outposts having already been driven back uh, from La Corona to Rivoli. The Austrian players uh, now had an opportunity to trap the French by attacking across the Trambolore Heights, assaulting the Rivoli Plain from the Adige. Simultaneously, a separate division would march up the Ostera Gorge in an attempt to turn the French flank. And a third detachment would also be sent over the Montebaldo to appear in the French rear. The question was, could these elements bring together enough pressure to bear on the French before reinforcements arrived? And the answer was no, <laughs> we couldn't. Sergit just couldn't fight his way out of the gorge to get onto the flank of the French position. Not his fault, it was just a terrible position to be in. And while I was able to take control of the Trambolor Heights, taking them broke my brigades and exhausted the division. In the end, we just didn't have enough brigades left in decent fighting condition to exploit any of our gains and all the while more French reinforcements were marching onto the plane. This was a great game, exciting right to the very end and I think we've all decided that we really like Richard's use of the second edition volume bayonet rules for this particular period. Now I have no idea when he'll be running another battle in this particular period, but the sooner the better as I thoroughly enjoyed this game, despite the hard fought defeat. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I did a short video on Friday featuring a few pictures from the game, but I also posted a load more pictures on my blog, so if you want a bit more 6mm MDF action, please check it out. It's time for a workbench update. Following on from uh, the 6 mm and medieval buildings I completed last week, I've purchased more from Slug Industries, this time from the first Kickstarter set that Phil made. Uh, I've quite enjoyed working on these models um, from the most recent set, so I expect to be working on the new models as soon as they arrive. I actually missed buying the original Kickstarter, um, and I, I wanted to buy it later on, I never got the chance, and now's my chance to sort of rectify that mistake and go back and have a look at some great models. Now, I haven't done much painting this week, despite the to-do list for the painting challenge 
This is partly due to work commitments, partly my own personal inertia, and partly because I tend to go off on a tangent at the slightest swim. So this week's unnecessary side project has been making heels. However, these are for use under a fleece gaming mat, so they aren't even being painted. They can't even be submitted as terrain in the painting challenge. <laughs> on the plus side, it did give me an excuse to get out my hot wire cutter again, and, and you know the process of melting through high density foam is strangely therapeutic I've no idea why it just is so that's it for this week a bit of a short one but I have lots on the go and I hope to have more to discuss next week if you enjoyed today's video please join the conversation in the comments below and of course like subscribe subscribe and share and if you want to keep up to date with weekly content from this channel please tap the bell notification icon so until next week stay safe keep gaming and of course keep rolling on